Hello guys, welcome to this video. Today I'm talking about Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm. It's an algorithm for finding the shortest path from a node source to all other nodes in the graph. Uh, and that's why we call it a single source shortest path algorithm. So the main insight of this algorithm is that first you want to find the shortest path using only one edge. That means you're allowed to use only one edge and you find the shortest path from source to all other nodes only using one edge. We don't specify which one edge uh, that is. We just say the number of edges have to be one. And then next step, we improve on this by allowing for you to use two edges. Again, we don't specify which two edges. All we specify is that the number of edges that you're allowed to use is two. Then you improve this over and over until finally you're allowed to use n minus one edges. And this will give you the shortest path from source to all other nodes in the graph. All right, let's see how this works. So imagine I give you this graph. You wanna find the shortest path from S to node two. So if I give you, you're only allowed to use one edge, i is equal to one, the distance of s to two would be nine because there's only one edge going from s to two and whose distance is nine. Now, if I tell you after this, you're allowed to use two edges, your new distance would be what you found before, so nine, and then you calculate a minimum of nine and other ways that you can come to node two, which is definitely through either of the predecessor edges of two. That would be node three, zero, and five. I give you two edges, you have to spend one on the edges, on, on the edge between three to two, or zero to two, or five to two, and then one edge to come to three, or zero, or five. So if you come to three, you spend one, the, the cost of it is seven, and then you spend the last one, the cost of it one, so that would be seven plus one. If you come to zero, that would be three plus three. If you come to five, you cannot come to five with only one edge, that would be infinity. And then from five to two would be one. Now the minimum value of all these values would be six. Now, next step, I give you three edges. You say the minimum value would be what I found before. Now you have three edges. So I can spend two edge to come to three or two edge to come to zero or two edge to come to five. And then the last edge from three to two, from zero to two or five to two. So spending two edge to come to node three would be from this path, three plus one, which is four. So I put four here. And then the last edge would be one, which is here. For node zero, there's not really any change for having two edges because there's no path of size two coming to zero. And same thing for five, there's no, you can't come to five with two halves. Therefore it's still infinity plus one. The, the minimum value of this would be five. Next step, I give you four edges. You spend three to come one of these predecessor edges. For node three, and zero, this wouldn't make any difference. So I would put five and six, what they had before. But for node five, I can spend one, two, and three edges to come to five. That would be a cost of three. And then the last one would be one with cost of one. So the total would be four. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your shortest distance from S to two. Now let's see what would be the general case of this. You can write d as a function, which would be the shortest distance from node source to node v using at most i edges, d of i and v. And we want to find out using the i minus 1 and v, which is this path that I'm showing here, i minus 1 and v, can we get to d i and v? And basically write this as a recursive function when at each step uh, we get the i minus 1 and v and then we find the i and v. All right, so now if I give you one edge more, you have to spend i minus 1 edges to go to one of the incoming edges, sorry, incoming nodes or predecessor nodes of node v and then spend the last edge on the, la the, the edge between that predecessor and v. So that would be i minus 1 plus 1. Finally, we have spent i edges. So you either go from this path or go from this path or go from this path. And then finally, we find the minimum value of all these possible edges, possible paths, and that would be our minimum shortest path using i edges.
So let's write this as a recursive function. D of i and v is the minimum of what we found before for v using i minus 1. And then uh, the minimum of this value and coming to one of the predecessors using i minus 1 plus the cost of going from the predecessor to v, this one. What are our base cases? If i is equal to 0, that means you're not allowed to use any edges. If v and s are the same, that means going from s to itself, obviously the distance is 0. But if you're not allowed to use any edges and v and s are not equal, we set the shortest path to infinity. And that's it. That's all that is to this recursive function for Bellman for shortest distance. Now, this is a translation, exact translation of this formula in C++. You can write this in your own favorite language. I'm not going through the details of this implementation, but I put some links to my GitHub in case you guys want to download and play with it. But we, let's focus on one of these predecessor nodes. In this case, u1. So for, find, for going from u1 to this node, I calculated di minus 1 and u1. But I do the same thing for any other node uh, who is a successor of u1. So for all these nodes, I calculate this di minus 1 and u over and over and over. This is a lot of recalculations in my recursive uh, relationship. Let's see how we can improve on this. Uh, this requires a really interesting uh, uh, realization, which is the base for dynamic programming, which is what if I calculate uh, the value of this function once, and then every time that there's a request for recalculating it, I use a table and I use the value. If I had it, I just return it from my table rather than do a recursive function call and spend a lot of time to recalculate this again. So this 2D table for i and v, i changes from 0 to n minus 1. I leave, you, uh, I leave this as a, as a homework why we only need to change i from 0 to n minus 1. And then v only ch changes for all the nodes in the graph. Uh, if you have n nodes in the graph, the table would be n by n, uh, and n being the size of the nodes in your graph. This is the implementation uh, using a two-dimensional table. It's exactly a translation that what we just talked about. I'm not going through the details. details. Uh, the, there's a link in the description that you can download and play with it. Uh, but let's focus on this part of the code. di and v uh, always depends on the i minus 1 and v or the i minus 1 of the incoming or predecessor nodes of v. So let's see if this is the case, can we have another realization and say instead of a two-dimensional table, because I'm always uh, only using the previous row to get to the new row, what if I just have one row and keep rewriting it rather than having multiple rows? What exactly am I saying? What I'm saying is that if you have a table, a two-dimensional table, and you change the rows from i going to 2 and then go to n minus 1, rather than having a two-dimensional table, use a one-dimensional table, and then once i changes, take the same table, which is one row only, and rewrite it for the values of i is equal to 3, and keep doing this for until the last stage, which would be n minus 1. This way, we magically move from a two-dimensional table to one-dimensional table. And this was possible because every stage only was depending on the previous stage. And then at the end, you only need the last row. What you calculated before is not useful for you at the end. And this is the translation of 2D to 1D. Again, it's exactly what we just talked about. Uh, I'm not go going through the details. You can either use my code or look at the Wikipedia pseudo code, which is basically exactly the same. I just want to focus on this part of the code where there is a for loop that, like I said, uh, changes from uh, changes i, the number of edges you're allowed to use, from 1 to n minus 1. And then inside this, we go through the incoming edges of v. If you uh, pay attention here in this for loop, we are, we are iterating all the edges of the graph and we iterate each edge only once. So the runtime of this uh, part of the code would be O of m, m being the number of edges in the graph. Now you have the outer, outer, 
outer loop, which is changing from i to 1, n times, so the total runtime would be n by m. And that's the runtime for Bellman Ford algorithm. So that's it, guys. This is a single source shortest path algorithm. The time complexity is n by n. We didn't talk about negative edges or negative cycles. I leave this to you as a homework assignment how uh, Bellman Ford can handle negative edges and how we can make a minor change to also be able to report negative cycles. This algorithm is named after Bellman and Ford. Fun fact about Bellman, he was a professor of computer science at USC, which is also the university that I took my PhD from years after him. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you liked this video and I see you in the next ones.